how will the most powerful AI supercomputer in higher education and 100 new AI focused faculty change education and the future at the University of Florida? It's pretty clear that AI is critical to the future of almost everything. If you want good cars, if you want safe power, if you want smartphones, if you want autonomous drones, maybe robots. If you want power saving technology in our homes or better speech to text when you chat with Siri, or maybe if you want to model how climate change might impact Florida's coastline and people, you need better, smarter, faster AI. Well, the University of Florida and NVIDIA just completed Hypergator AI. It's the eighth most powerful supercomputer in higher education globally and the 22nd fastest supercomputer on the planet. And I want to know what they're planning to do with it. To chat with us, we have Dr. Joseph Glover, Provost and Senior VP of Academic Affairs at University of Florida, as well as Cheryl Martin, who leads higher education for NVIDIA. Welcome everybody. Morning. Morning, morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's chat with you first, Joe. Tell us about the supercomputer. Uh, you, you mean the specifications of it? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, geek out a little bit for us. Uh, what does this beast look like? What, is it, what can it do? It, it, is, it is amazing to us. Um, it, I think it has 1,120 GPUs in it. As you mentioned, it, it's, the, it's the eighth fastest in the United States, and it's the 22nd fastest in the entire world. It actually fills our entire data center. We were really lucky uh, when Chris Palakowski and NVIDIA uh, approached us about giving us the, the supercomputer. You have to have a place to put it. And we had built a data center that we thought would serve our needs for the next 25 to 30 years before we filled it. The supercomputer, Hyperdata AI, filled it in January. Uh, we flipped the switch and it's been operating flawlessly for us. Wow. Impressive. I mean, we thought the, the days of room-sized computers were behind us, right? But I guess not for supercomputers. No, I, I think that's true. I mean, I mean, most people, of course, on campus will never actually see Hyperdata AI uh, because it, it's, it's located off campus, but, uh, but it does fill a room. It takes a lot of air conditioning and a lot of power to service it. I'm told that when we were running the speed test, it was drawing 1.1 megawatts. So it's a, it's a pretty hefty machine when it's up and running full, full speed. That is super interesting. And maybe we'll chat with Cheryl about that in just a moment as well. I mean, you need, you almost need your own power plant or you certainly need to get uh, increased power supplies in there. Maybe the, the state dims a bit, <laughs> you turn it on. Uh, perhaps there's even some solar power running there. But I wanna ask, what can you do with this supercomputer? What do you expect it to be working on, Joe? Well, we expect it to be doing a, a couple of things. Uh, for one thing, we expect it to really be a new tool that's going to be in the arsenal of the people doing research. A as you know, the AI supercomputers are absolutely fantastic at crunching huge amounts of data. And we are tackling real world problems that, that do involve enormous amounts of data. In the field of medicine, we're looking at better medical outcomes. We're looking to bend the cost curve of medicine in agriculture. Uh, we know that the United States and quite possibly the Southeast is going to end up as the nation's food basket. And so we, we are doing that. Uh, as you mentioned in your intro, climate change is a challenge for the state of Florida in terms of sea level rise and the changing environment. We're trying to get a handle on that. All of these things involve huge amounts of data. Uh, and this is where the, the hyperdata AI really excels. So in fact, we've already done one really large program. Uh, Cheryl is probably more technically able to explain it than I am, but it's called Gatortron, in which we digested about a billion words of medical records from the past 10 years in our hospital system to see if we could de-identify it to make it usable and to begin to find, um, to, to glean hidden truths in there. And so far, the, the doctors and the scientists working on this are very excited about the preliminary results. Uh, it's a little bit over my head, quite honestly, but I just wanted to give that as an example that, that we're already engaged in really large projects. This episode of Tech First is sponsored by my creator coin, Dollar Smart. Don't think of it like Bitcoin, think of it like a backstage pass at a concert. Get some at Rally 
bit.io slash creator slash SMRT to pitch me on podcast guests, earn weekly rewards, get social amplification, and get or give feedback on strategy and plans. Cheryl, maybe tell us a little bit about that. That sounds super interesting. I mean, I'm looking forward to an AI that I can give my health information to and everybody else's and in an anonymous way, give me tips and insights about how I can be healthier. What was that project? Yeah. So this actually looked at the, um, had the data from the University of Florida's health system um, and what they're able to do. If you look at what the healthcare industry has gone through over the last, I don't know, 20 years was to get all of those paper records onto um, computerized systems and um, have them digitized. And they went through all that effort and okay, it's there. Um, there wasn't a lot of value that came out of that other than, you know, maybe they cleaned up rooms of paper and stuff, but now there's actually value inside of all that data. And so what they can do then is the, the natural, it's built on um, something called Megatron from NVIDIA. And then they took this and they, um, you know, ran it through all that data. And so it can help them understand things like trends that are happening, you know, in different areas, but also help them with disease detection and, and hopefully, you know, lots of other things along that, uh, that path by having this data. And, and they've just started really. And, and when you look at this, there's so many things you have to learn, like even dialect. So there's data that, that comes out of that, but there's different dialects from the Northern part of Florida to the Southern part of Florida. And so to really understand what's in that data, it takes a lot of compute power to do that. But the benefits, the outcome, the, the, you know, the vision, the future where we're going, I shouldn't even say vision, the future where we're, it can take us is amazing. That is really interesting. I mean, I, I love that point about dialects. I mean, we've all seen the, the, the videos on YouTube about the guy in Scotland or, or Ireland trying to get the voice activated elevator to go. <laughs> it does not understand him at all. We all have some challenges with that. Uh, Joe, I want to come back to you. Um, two things that you're doing that are really interesting and in my understanding, quite unique. One, you're adding a hundred faculty in and around AI, teaching AI, learning with AI, all that stuff. And two, you are bringing AI across the curriculum. Talk to us about why you're doing those things and how it's working out. Yeah, first, let me, let me talk about adding 100 faculty. Of course, we already had several hundred faculty who were engaged with AI in, in one form or another, but we have really um, jumped into this with both feet. We believe that this is going to be a transformational initiative for the University of Florida. We think that this is where higher education is going to inevitably go. And so we wanted to, to double down on our investment and really ensure that we strengthen the areas uh, even further that we're going to do AI. Now, we, we don't do just pure AI from a computer science sense. We do AI in applications. So we're investing those extra 100 faculty across the entire University of Florida uh, to, to do all sorts of things. As I mentioned before, we're doing AI in medicine, AI in drugs, AI in agriculture, AI in business. Uh, the College of Business just made AI a required introductory course for their entering freshmen. So, so we are in the process of adjusting our curriculum. And right from the outset, when Chris Malachowski and NVIDIA approached us about this machine, they asked, they asked us the question, what would you do with it? And one of our answers was, we would teach AI across the curriculum. We are not limiting it to the computer science department or even the College of Engineering. It's being taught in every college. And, and I'm really pleased to say that the faculty have embraced this. They see this as the future. They see it as a wonderful tool and something that's going to be a great advantage to the students to have in their skills portfolio. And equally importantly, you know, the United States federal government has identified the creation of a 21st century AI enabled workforce as one of the nation's critical security problems, both from the point of view of um, literally national security, but also economic security. In order to build a 21st century AI enabled workforce, you have to educate people at scale. And so we believe that educating all of our students across the entire university is going to contribute significantly to growing this workforce. We graduate about 10,000 students a year at the University of Florida. If even half of them come out 
with AI competence. And that's going to be a huge inf infusion into the economy of Florida and the Southeast United States and the nation more generally. And moreover, we think that this is, this is a national model that could be imitated by universities around the country. So we've actually engaged with the state university system in Florida and talked them about this and, and are trying to convince them that this is the way to go. We're also in conversation with the universities and the SEC to see if they would like to contribute on this scale as well. I can't tell you how impressive that is. Um, it's, it's amazing because I see it every day. I work with it every day. I, I work with technology. I report on technology all the time. And AI is critical to almost every piece of technology that we have and almost every activity that we have. And for business and for products, improving at scale and at speed, embedding intelligence in them, embedding the ability to learn from how they're being used and to get better at adapting themselves to how people need them to work uh, is really impressive. And bringing that across the curriculum is really, really amazing. Cheryl, let's bring you back in here because this is not just one thing that's going on. This is part of a larger effort to equip higher education with supercomputers. Talk with us a little bit about that for a moment. Yeah, so, so we kind of look at this. There's sort of three different parts to this, and Joe touched on all three of those. And the first one really is the workforce enablement piece. So if you look at NVIDIA is engaged in AI across the spectrum of, of all the different industries, and every industry is you know, in a different place, but we're kind of still at the beginning of all this, but it's moving so fast. If you think back even 10 years ago, even five years ago, how fast we're moving. So when you look at the workforce readiness piece of this, it's, uh, we've got a long way to go. So we're going to have graduating students going out there and we already have a lot of those industries that are just not finding the skills that they need today. So there's opportunities to reskill the workforce, but to be able to bring in those skilled workers is incredibly important. So the work that Florida is doing to look at this cross discipline is, is you know, it, it's in the retail industry, it's in the healthcare industry, it's in, uh, you know, automotive, it's in every single industry, right? So the workforce readiness piece is, is extremely important. And so NVIDIA is doing a lot of work to ensure that we help, you know, build the skills across the, um, across the spectrum. The second part of this is research. And I think this is one of the ones that typically you might think of, of NVIDIA with, but if you look at research, you know, the United States still typically leads in, in research, but other countries are starting to have, you know, more papers accepted, more and more papers accepted at the different um, conferences. And so it's really important, the, the kind of research that we can do, the important research that could have never been done before. So everything, you know, huge amounts in the healthcare industry. Um, but again, everything that we do. And I think that that's been one of the, good benefits that we've seen at University of Florida, because they have the infrastructure to take on that research, they have attracted a lot more funding to be able to start to do some of that research. So research is, and, and doing research that we could have never been done before. So um, that's the second part of this. And then the third part, which Joe, you know, touched on a bit as well, which is the local economic impact. So we all hear about the brain drain and, and the issue with so many of the really highly skilled people going to industry versus staying in, in research or staying in the community that they're in. So the work that Joe is in uh, University of Florida is doing to include the state university system. And then another one that they're, that we're working on with them is the inclusive engineering. So as we look at the historically black colleges and universities and the Hispanic speaking, you know, all of the minority serving institutions and being able to include them as part of this effort is really, really important as well. So it's a pretty broad initiative and it's extremely important for the, for the United States in particular, but we're seeing this play out in different scale uh, in different countries as well. Very cool. And maybe um, Cheryl geek out with us for just a moment here. Tell us about Hypergator AI in some detail. Uh, what, what does that computer um, include? What's, uh, what are the components that build it up and what is it capable of? Well, Joe did a pretty good job there with his initial um, description, and he got the it's 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 140 of the NVIDIA DGX systems, and it's uh, 1120 of our our A100 processors. And just to put that in perspective, uh, this was true a couple of months ago, and I think it still is. If you look at all of the in in North America, the systems that are available for researchers, it's bigger than all of those combined from a GPU perspective. So, yeah, for 
this the newest version of the GPUs and uh, the the type um, and GPUs. They're you know obviously large CPU systems and and older GPU systems as well. But this one is bigger than those. Um, so it's it's really take things to a to a, a new level from that standpoint. Um, very cool, very cool. I want to thank both of you. Uh, super interesting. Uh, really neat to hear your perspective, Joe, on what you're building, what you're doing, what you're providing. Uh, thank you for taking some time.